Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Monday, September 18th, 2023, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 4, verses 28 through 31, and chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Brethren, we, like Isaac, are children of promise. But as at the time, he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, so it is now. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave and her son, for the son of the slave shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So, brethren, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Now I, Paul, say to you, that if you receive circumcision, Christ will be no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is bound to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is of any avail but faith working through love. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in the Lord that you will take no other view than mine, and he who is troubling you will bear his judgment, whoever he is. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Chapter 3, verses 19 through 22. Let us be attentive. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by John for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he shut up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form as a dove. And a voice came from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. In today's readings, we have a very interesting transition that occurs, because we are no longer bound by the same obligations as Christians that those who had once followed God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were bound by a different set of expectations. They were people of the law. Now, the law, roughly, is the first five books of the Old Testament. We call that the Pentateuch or the Torah. Regardless, one of the greatest signs, especially amongst the males, of course, is the practice of circumcision. Circumcision was something that God told Abraham that needed to be done to those who were part of his group. Those who followed after the God of Israel were expected to be circumcised. There's even a story in the book of Exodus how Moses was called by God to go and free his people from their Egyptian captivity. But on his way to Egypt, he rested, and when he did, an angel came to kill him because he had not yet circumcised his son. So Moses' wife circumcises the child, shows the effects of it, if you will, the blood, to the angel, and the angel's wrath is put at ease. Think about that. Even then, there are situations where even though he was called to go and free the people, he was going to die because he had failed to live up to the teachings of God. So, we have circumcision as the sign of people who belong to God in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, we don't have that anymore. We have instead the practice of baptism. Baptism is the sign through which Christians are recognized as being brought into the Christian community. There is not one Christian that hasn't been baptized. I mean, largely speaking, I'm sure there are exceptions somehow. 
but the practice of baptism is the gateway through which someone becomes a Christian in this life. So we have circumcision as showing the sign on the one hand, and we have baptism on the other. And then St. Paul goes back to the practice of circumcision and says it is not necessary for Christians to have been cir circumcised in order to become Christian. That was a question that was actually of high debate in the time of St. Paul, because obviously Jesus comes from the Jewish community. Jesus himself, as we celebrate on January 1st, was circumcised. And so there were many who said, in order to become a Christian, you must first be circumcised and then be baptized. But St. Paul does away with that, and ultimately the entire church does away with that. Circumcision is not necessary for that to happen. And St. Paul took particular exception over the fact that so many people lorded the fact that they were circumcised. It made them somehow better and more important than those who had not been yet circumcised. Again, St. Paul completely destroys that argument. And from that point forth, circumcision is no longer seen as an important part of the life of living in God the Father. And so what happens in baptism? We see in Christ that he subjects himself to baptism out of pure obedience to the Father. But we follow after Christ for the forgiveness of sins. It's sort of a merger, if you will between what our Lord does out of obedience and what John does for the rest of the people of Judea, baptizing them for the remission of sins. When we enter the water, our old self is washed away. The uncleanness is washed away. The demonic possession, if there is such a thing in our lives, is washed away. And what is brought in is a clean and pristine new being in Christ himself. We die to our old self upon entering the waters, and we live to our new one as we come out of it. And so in today's reading in the gospel, we see our Lord coming out of the waters out of obedience, not because he has to be baptized for any other reason except to perfectly fulfill the will of his Father who is in heaven. And when he does, the Father bears witness to him, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this is the one that we ourselves follow. Now, we'll get closer to the Feast of Theophany in the month of January, and we'll speak at much greater length about the practice of baptism and what it means and so forth. But here we see in these two readings the difference between being initiated into the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the covenantal community of the Jewish great race, and we see the difference between that and the reception into the Christian community through the practice of baptism. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a like and sharing it with your friends. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And also subscribe to the channel if you are interested. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I pray you have a great day. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.